Welcome to the 28storms.com tropical weather update for Thursday, August 11th. The Hurricane Center is still highlighting a surface trough to the southwest of Bermuda. They give that a 10% chance of forming a tropical cyclone within 48 hours, although the upper air environment really does not look all that favorable. So the main action is out toward the eastern Atlantic and the coast of Africa, where we now have two areas of investigation. We have both 92 and 93L invest out there, and the Hurricane Center are giving both of these tropical waves a 40% chance of tropical cyclone formation within the next 48 hours. Again, much of the areas close to home are fairly clear today. The Gulf and Caribbean don't really have any shower activity. We still have that surface trough over here, but as mentioned before, the water vapor imagery reveals that the upper air pattern is just a bit too volatile for any type of organization in that vicinity. But the main action, once again, is in the central Atlantic, where if we go back toward the latest visible imagery, we see that we have a very high amplitude tropical wave axis. It stretches all the way to above 20 degrees north now. And the one promising thing that I do see today is that the primary low-level circulation is beginning to focus much of its energy along the extreme northern half of the wave axis. And of course, the more northerly latitude that these systems gain initially as they begin to trek through the central Atlantic, the greater the chance that this recurves to the north of the Caribbean and eventually even the United States as of course, if they gain more latitude, then they will be more prone to being picked up by mid to upper level troughs. If we turn to the latest infrared, we still see that the tropical wave in question is still not overly organized just yet. We have some convection being left behind here along the intertropical conversion zone, while the primary vorticity max begins to lift more toward the west-northwest, and it's still battling a lot of dry air out ahead of it, and that will continue to be the main challenge for 92L. We are now moving into the overnight hours near the Cape Verde Islands, so we don't have the luxury to show the visible imagery at this hour. But we can see on the latest infrared that 93L invest, the tropical wave right behind 92, still looks fairly impressive. There's really not that much sign of a well-defined low-level circulation, but there is at least a mid-level center here, as you can kind of make out by the symmetry here in the mid-level cloud pattern and that will be yet the next area to keep a very close watch on even if 92 begins to recurve that's not that's not to say that this one will follow the same track the latest spaghetti model plots for 92 L invest are in well agreement and they're fairly clustered here to the north of the Caribbean and as you can see nearly all of the models suggest that this will be recurving out to sea over the western Atlantic with the only threat possibly being posed to Bermuda in the medium range but notice how things vary a little bit here when we switch over to the model plots for 93L Invest. They imply a bit more of a westerly track, and again, that's more so because 93L has come off the coast of Africa at a bit lower latitude, which gives this a better chance of making it all the way across, at least until it gets into the Caribbean. The current thinking behind 92L recurving near Bermuda is due to the fact that all the model guidance shows that the Long wave troughiness over the east coast United States will persist for at least the next five to seven days. And if there will be a pattern shift, it won't come until 92L has made that complete rec recurvature and therefore would pose no threat to the east coast United States. Of course, nothing is edged in stone this far out into the future, and there will be some model disagreement. Because, for example, this is the 12Z CMC forecast. I still think it's a little bit too far south initially. It almost takes it into the U.S. Virgin Islands that I'm speaking of, 92L invest and by day six it has 92L developing into a borderline hurricane here as it begins to approach the eastern half of the Bahamas which is also implying somewhat of an east coast threat. The 12Z GFS is probably a bit more realistic with the pattern evolution. We're now looking at the 96 hour forecast so this is Monday morning it takes 92L just to the north of Puerto Rico, more than likely as a tropical storm, as you can see denoted by the current vorticity max on the screen. But notice how the trough over the east coast has not left. In fact, it's only continuing to amplify a bit more, which will pump the ridge over the central Atlantic, but not enough to really guide this straight into the United States. And as we advance this, this trough only continues to persist further here across much of, much of the mid-Atlantic and New England states. And obviously by day six or Wednesday morning, the storm is now well embedded within the trough and beginning to lift north fairly quickly. But notice how 93L is a lot more down toward the south here, beginning to make its way into the Lesser Antilles. Once again, this is by Wednesday morning. It's not overly strong with the system today, but that's not to mean that it's not going to develop. 
And then look here by day six, we still see that there is a trough over the east coast, but it's not quite as amplified and deep as it was when it picked up the initial storm. And in the meantime, our 93 is a tropical cyclone headed for Puerto Rico. Now, interest in the Caribbean, definitely start keeping a watch on both of these systems. Don't get overly concerned just yet. Once again, it looks like the first one will miss you. And then the second one, we'll just have to wait and see, but that's about six to seven days away. The latest European model run is in very striking agreement with the GFS. As we look into 48 hours, we see that the initial wave, 92L Invest, is continuing on its west-northwest trajectory. By 72 and 96 hours, it's very clear that the system is expected to pass well to the north of the Caribbean. And by 120 hours, again, we're looking at the 850 millibar height field here. But you can still make out that trough fairly well off the east coast United States. So it's picking up 92 and sending it north near Bermuda as a tropical storm, more than likely. And then by 144 hours, much like the GFS, or almost exactly like the GFS, we have the second system coming in, trying to develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm. And within the next five to seven days, it begins to approach the Virgin Islands. So just to recap, it looks like 92L, the first wave coming off the coast of Africa, probably has about a 50-50 chance of formation within the next few days. But even if it were to develop as of right now, it looks like it's going to bypass the Caribbean to the north and recurve to the east of the United States, but we still can't say that for certain, although the confidence is fairly high. Interest in Bermuda especially have to keep a close watch on that system. It's still going to be a few more days until we can fully determine just how close it could possibly pass and at what intensity, if it even develops at all. And then for our second system, that could pose a greater threat down the road. As indications are, it may take a bit more of a westerly track, but we still have a really long time to continue to monitor that one as it's really far out there near the Cape Verde Islands. So stay tuned to 28storms.com throughout the duration of the 2011 hurricane season. The analysis will become more extensive as the threats become more severe. So thanks again for tuning in and have a good evening.